purposes of a trial. Um, the question should perhaps be reversed. Is there any purpose served by allowing a murderer to walk free? What does it mean to our society if you allow enormous injustices to go unrecorded and unpunished in some way to serve as a deterrent for future crimes? The purposes of the Nuremberg trials were vitally important for the welfare of the future of humanity. Uh, Justice Jackson put it very well. He said, what is at stake here is the existence of humanity itself because the Nazis set out to destroy all groups with which they didn't agree, racially or politically. If they were allowed to do that and not have us react by saying that's a terrible thing, we will not tolerate it, and to support the rule of law, we would have had nothing but chaos and anarchy throughout the world. So the purpose was fundamental to achieve justice for the victims who had been perished and also to act as a life-saving device for the future. The Holocaust, or the killings which are now known as the Holocaust, were not uh, adequately portrayed, my judgment, in the first trial. We didn't grasp the full measure of Nazi criminality, partly because it was almost incomprehensible why a country as civilized as Germany could be involved in such massive slaughters and such massive crimes of discrimination against whole categories of people. There were evidence, of course, of the liberation of many of the concentration camps, Buchenwald, for example, where I was one of the liberators. I was liberated in other camps, Mauthausen, Ebensee, a whole slew of camps. Uh, so we knew that there were terrible things going on, but that it was organized on the highest level and supported by all levels of the government, that only came out in the subsequent trials and the subsequent history. And if you're going to understand how it's possible to commit such terrible crimes, you must understand the mentality of the murderers. My name is Gertrude Ferenz. I had two different jobs. The Berlin job was in the document center. I was processing documents that were going down to Nuremberg. Uh, when I got to Nuremberg, finally, about six months later, I was hired as administrative assistant for one of the trials, the Krupp trial, actually. But his trial was much more, my husband's trial was much more interesting. <laughs> I, I spent more time in his courtroom than in the group courtroom, although I went there too. And essentially it was just running the office. Um, and that's what I did for about two years. And what, so you, so you were an observer in the courtroom during a bunch of I years. was essentially an observer, yes. And what, what sort of things did you observe? I observed the trial and the defendants and the interrogations and it was a very exciting time. Scary in some ways, frightening. The courts were open to the public. Anybody could come. They were the fairest trials you can imagine. We supplied, in my husband's case, he had about three or four lawyers on his staff, and each of the 22 defendants had two lawyers each, so that was 44 against about four. But they lost the case. <laughs> they committed the crimes. I didn't have to worry about anything. So uh, I wrote an article about the fairness of the Nuremberg trials. In fact, I thought they were very unfair to the prosecution because we were outnumbered. They had all the information. We were young American boys usually who didn't know much about Germany, didn't know the language. Uh, but we gave them all the documentary evidence that we had 30 days before trial. They could say whatever they liked. It was translated into German and English. They're open to the public. There couldn't be a fairer trial. As Justice Jackson said, they received the kind of a trial which they, in the days of their pomp and power, never gave to any man. And so it was. I, I had an advantage. I studied German in college because I was major psychology major, and I thought, well, it might come in handy. It really did come in handy in Berlin, but I never imagined I'd go back to Germany. <laughs> but it worked. To study the psychology of mass murderers. No, I didn't do that. The absence of remorse. Very was disappointing striking. that no remorse. No remorse. Very, one man said to me once, I'm ashamed to be a German, and it turned out that he was half Jewish. I was very disappointed. Yeah. Those who had really. nothing to be ashamed of were ashamed. And those we had knew, ashamed I personally knew about two different, two individuals. One was a nurse and one was a professor who were truly anti-Nazi people. How they survived, I don't know, but they survived. 
But you knew a couple of Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. There were Germans in the concentration camps. It's a big mistake. That's to true. To paint all the Germans with a Nazi brush. Uh, they were, the Nazis were very popular with the public, and they were supported by many people. But there are not many heroes in other countries either who dare to speak out.